Welcome back to another lesson. It's so good to see all your smiling faces. Well, I can't see your faces, but I hope that you are smiling. Today's lesson is really, really straightforward. So it's going to be nice and quick and easy one. We are talking about the cell. So I hope you know that your cell drawing by now. I hope that you've mastered that because that's going to be very important in your understanding and it's going to help you grasp the content of the cell a lot better. So we are talking about the structure, the function. We're talking about tissues, organs and organ systems today. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so the first section is the cell structure. And here you have to realize that before we go into it, you have to know that all organisms are made up of cells. Now some organisms are multicellular and some organisms are unicellular. A cell can be seen with a light microscope. Yes, we've got our drawing of our cell. A good light microscope enlarges by 1500 times. This number you need to know, it's important. Then we can take a snapshot of this enlargement and this is called a photomicrograph. These are the pictures that you see in your textbook of cells. These are photomicrographs. We want to look at smaller structures. We take a look at the electron microscope. We take a look at the cell through the electron microscope. This is highly powerful microscopes and they enlarge up to 500,000 times, which is incredible. Okay, so now we're gonna jump into the, the structures of the cell. So first we're gonna take a look at the cell membrane because it's the most important, or it's the, one, the most important part to start with because this is what keeps the cell together. The cell membrane is found in all cells, plant cells and animal cells. It is a partially permeable membrane made up of a thin layer of proteins and lipids. And this partially permeable membrane controls what goes in and what goes out of the cell. That's what partially permeable means. It means it's permeable to certain substances. It's partially permeable. This membrane keeps our cytoplasm and all our other organelles within the cell. Next up, we've got our cell wall. The cell wall is found in plant cells. And our cell wall is made out of cellulose, which is a polysaccharide. A polysaccharide just means many molecules attached to each other. These cellulose fibers crisscross and they provide a very strong cell wall. And the function of the cell wall is to protect and to support our cells. So when a plant cell absorbs water, there's a certain amount of pressure that the water exerts outward on the cell wall. Now the cell wall prevents the cell from bursting from this internal pressure created by the water. This is very important for plants. So take for example lettuce. If you leave lettuce in the sun, it wilts. It loses water. So the cells become limp. When the cells absorb water, they become rigid. It's called turgor pressure. Now this pressure is pressure created as the leaves have absorbed water and the water is exerting an internal pressure outward on the cells. Now plant cell walls are very, very important because they make um, it possible for plant cells to attain that rigid the pressurized state. Now we're going to take a look at what's inside the cell in the cytoplasm which is a clear jelly-like substance in the cell. Um, it, cytoplasm contains many dissolved substances for example proteins are held in the cytoplasm and that allows a lot of metabolic reactions to take place in the cytoplasm. Okay so you've probably seen on some pictures of cells small little looks like little circles, little organelles. These are vacuoles. Vacuoles. I think I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> they are small membrane bound sacs um, and they hold fluids. Uh, for example, there can be sugar, cell sac or water in these vacuoles. Now it's important to note that plant cells have larger vacuoles whereas animal cells have smaller vacuoles. Another organelle that we're going to take a look at is the chloroplast. So this is an organelle that contains chlorophyll and chlorophyll absorbs light, it, it converts the light energy into energy that the plant can use as well as food for the plant. This is a process known as photosynthesis. 
Now, one of the most important, if not the most important organelle in the cell is the nucleus. All cells have nucleus, a cell cannot not have a nucleus. The nucleus contains the genetic information and what the nucleus does is it has the instructions for the cell's metabolic processes. So it contains the instructions for the cell to make proteins, for the cell to excrete substances or everything that goes on within the cell is controlled by the nucleus. The genetic material in the nucleus are held in chromosomes and the chromosomes are made up of DNA which stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Don't get a fright, it's a big name but just know the name. So one of the most important organelles, if not the most important organelles when it comes to energy production is the mitochondria. The mitochondria is found in all cells. The only types of cells mitochondria aren't found is in our prokaryotes which is a kingdom we discussed in the previous lecture. So mitochondria are very small, they can only be seen with an electron microscope. They are involved in aerobic respiration which aerobic only stands for oxygen, so oxygen is involved. So how it works is oxygen and glucose go into our mitochondria and the mitochondria process them, there's chemical reactions and we are given energy. So some other information that you have to know is that glycogen is the storage form of glucose and glycogen can be broken down and used as fuel by the mitochondria when it's needed. So earlier we were talking about how the nucleus gives instructions to the cell to make proteins. So proteins are made in our ribosomes and that's what we're going to be talking about now. Ribosomes are found again in all our cells and they are extremely small. They can only be seen with an electron microscope. Our ribosomes um, can attach to a network of membranes within the cell and form what is called a rough endoplasm reticulum. You'll see it's sort of like a network with all these little dots. You'll see them in the photomicrographs in your textbook. As I said before, ribosomes make proteins by joining amino acids together. Because as you know, proteins are simply like chains of amino acids joined together and folded together. They can be multiple chains. Our DNA gives instructions to make certain proteins. So what does the ribosome do? It joins together amino acids to form these proteins. So when we talk about cells, it can be important to be able to measure cells, to compare. Um, and how do we do that? Well, we can't use meters or centimeters or even millimeters. Those are way too big. Cells are minute. We have to use a measurement unit called micrometers. So micrometers are extremely small. For example, one micrometer is 10 to the negative 6 meters. These conversions are very important. You have to know them out of your head. We're quickly going to do an example here. And we've got a question, you've got a question in your textbook which asks how many micrometers are in one centimeter? So what we can do is we can, can convert centimeters to meters and then we can convert the meters to micrometers. Using so simple algebra, we can easily solve this problem. So the next section in our textbook is cells and organisms. So organisms have, all organisms have cells, but within those organisms there can be multiple different types of cells. Each type of cell has a specialized function. So now we're going to be talking about tissues. And tissues are groups of cells with similar structure and function. Organs are made up of these tissues. It's a group of tissues. An example of an organ would be our calf muscle or an onion bulb. Taking another step back, we take a look at organ systems. And these are organs that work together in a system. <laughs> Examples of this is our nervous system or our muscular system in its entirety. I want you to go summarize a table that's found in your textbook. It's very important as a lot of questions come from knowing these differences. 
going to be very important. Study this, know it off by heart. Okay, so now that we've finished with the lesson, let's go take a look at some questions from past papers. Okay, so we're going to start off with a relatively easy question. The first question asks, this question asks, uh, the diagram shows some animal cells as seen under the microscope. These are our cells. We've got a label X there. This question asks, what will be present at X? Now we know X is the cell membrane. So let's take a look at our options. A is one cell membrane. B is one cell wall. C is two cell membranes and D is two cell walls. These are two adjacent cells, each with their own cell membrane. And even though it looks like it's only one cell membrane, that will be two cell membranes. So our answer will be C. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at another question. This question asks us to take a look at this diagram of the cell. And the question asks which structure of the cell is not present. So which structure is not present. So we can, before we take a look at our answers, let's take a look at the cell. We've got our nucleus, we've got our cytoplasm, we've got our ribosomes and we've got vacuoles and we've got our cell membrane. So let's take a look at which one is not present. We've got that one, check. We've got, we do not have a cell wall. There's no cell wall. We've got cytoplasm and we've got a nucleus. So we know answer here will be D, or B, cell wall. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at a question that requires us to know our definitions. Figure one shows some cells from the lining of the tray here. So here we've got some cells, we've got our nuclei, these cells have some cilia, they've got cell membranes, and here we have a goblet cell that secretes mucus. So the question asks us, describe the functions of the nucleus and the cell membrane. So now we have, here we have to know the definition of a nucleus. So our nucleus contains genetic material in the form of chromosomes. And the genetic material provides information and it gives instructions to make proteins. These instructions um, control the cell. Now we have to give the definition of a cell membrane. Our cell membrane is a partially permeable membrane and it controls what goes in and out of the cell. It also keeps the cytoplasm and other organelles in our cell. Next we are asked to define the term tissue. This comes from our cells and organisms section. A tissue is a group of cells with similar structure and function. All right, that concludes today's video. Good luck with the studying and go and get those good marks.